Okay. Um, any any doubts and or questions that you might have, or anything that you want, anything that you noticed, you know, that you'd like to share. Maybe you something that you've, you know, you did not notice before. Um, you know, you noticed for the first time, or kind of it made sense. Anything that you'd like to share, um, you can go ahead. Um, you can even put it in the chat. You know, some of the things uh, about the work of the Holy Spirit, right? About the person of the Holy Spirit, the work of the Holy Spirit. Um, so you could um, share that. Okay. Excuse me. Okay. Anyone? Anything that uh, that you noticed and you yeah yeah, yeah Pastor, it was uh, I was just observing how uh, Jesus' words was uh, perfectly fulfilled in Acts, uh, like everyone is getting baptized and then getting filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, yeah, right. there are. Yeah, so that is, uh, yeah, that's great. Yeah, amazing. To, to amazing details, right? Yeah, the same way. Um, at different aspects of the Holy Spirit, like he said, you will be endured with power and you'll be witnesses. It happened. He said he will be the, you know, he'll, he'll be the comforter um, and that, you know, the paraclete also that we see happening. And, uh, you know, like you said, um, everything that the, the Lord foretold, you know, he will teach and he will remind and he will tell you of things to come, you know, and we see, we see that all that ha uh, that's happening. Yeah. Praise God. Okay. Anyone else? something that you've noticed. Um, okay, um, you can put it in the chat as well. Okay, so let's, um, let's keep going. Um, and uh, let's uh, Let's look at uh, a few more, right? We we stopped with Acts chapter nine, um, so let's look at um, uh, Acts chapter ten, and um, so Acts chapter ten and verse nineteen. So here uh, we're going to look at um, uh, Peter and the way in which the Holy Spirit uh, instructed him, led him uh, to do. Uh, to, uh, to do the work of ministry, okay? So Peter, um, he's in, uh, you know, um, uh, 1019, we read about um, uh, the fact that that uh, uh, even before that, okay, even before um, uh, the instruction is given to Peter, God kind of sets up the whole thing with this person named Cornelius in this place called Caesarea, okay? He's a centurion uh, and uh, he's a, He's a person who feared the Lord. He's a devout man. And uh, we read that he was a generous person and who prayed to God, though he did not know. And he did not have a clear understanding, but he, he was a devout man. He was a sincere person and who was, you know, whom we would say a seeker, maybe. Um, but he prayed to God always. He was a generous person. He was a good, good man. And now he has... Uh, an encounter, you know, he has a vision, and the angel of the Lord, uh, you know, um, communicating to him and saying, um, "Your prayers have come up, your arms have come up, your generosity and prayers have come up before as a memorial before God, and an instruction, very clear instruction, right? Send men to Joppa, this place called Joppa, and ask for Simon, whose name surname is Peter, and uh, and so." Cornelius obeys. Okay, so probably this is not the first time he's had that encounter. I'm just guessing, right? um, but he obeys, right? He because he's sending his people to Joppa based on a vision that he had, right? So, uh, so maybe he was in the practice of receiving this this kind of instructions. Um, we don't know, but but anyway, he obeys. He sends people uh, to Joppa uh, in search of a man 
called Simon Peter, and uh, with the instruct, uh, you know, uh, and very clear instructions were given, you know, that he's staying in the such a place. He's staying with a tanner, a man, a man who works with leather. He's, uh, you know, uh, a tannery. So his whose house is by the sea, and so on. So, um, so he's he's lodging with a tanner whose name is also Simon, and uh, his house is by the sea. So he sends people uh, to contact this Simon Peter. Okay, so Simon and he says, you know, he will tell you what you must do. Okay, so Simon Peter, uh, get Simon Peter, he will tell you. So he sends these sends these men, and uh, Peter is there, and in the dirty place, and he goes up to pray. He's hungry. He wanted to eat, and they were the food was getting ready. Uh, uh, it almost lunchtime, and he he has a trance. Okay, he fell into a trance and and had this experience had this vision kind of thing and he saw heaven opened and an object like a great sheet bound at the four corners descending to him and let down and uh, and the voice came to him rise peter kill and eat and this sheet had all kinds of you know animals wild beasts creeping things birds of the air okay rise peter kill and eat Peter says, no, Lord, I have never eaten anything common or unclean. So he's, a, he's a Jewish man. So he's saying, you know, I cannot, I cannot eat these because uh, these are not part of the Jewish diet. I've never eaten anything that is common or unclean. I will not eat. No, Lord. Then the again, the voice is, what God has cleansed, you must not call common. Okay, And this happens three times. Same thing. The sheep let down, animals in it, all kinds of animals. Rice, Peter, kill and eat. Peter refuting, refusing to do that. And uh, so this this object is taken back into heaven, and and Peter's thinking, you know, what was that? What a strange, what a strange thing, right? Uh, Peter's wondering, and as he's wondering, the men who had been sent from Cornelius, uh, from Caesarea. They come to Joppa, and they are there at the door, and they're inquiring, uh, "Is Simon Peter here?" And uh, verse nineteen. Okay. While Peter thought about the vision, the Spirit said to him, "Okay, he's thinking about the vision." The Holy Spirit speaks to Peter and says, "Spirit said to him, Behold, three men are seeking you. Arise, therefore, go down." And go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Okay, very clear. Three men. Okay, a number of people coming, and and they are what they are doing. Right, they are seeking. They are searching for you. Three men have come. They are searching for you. You arise. This is what I want you to do. Go. Don't doubt anything. Go with them, for I have sent them. Okay, so. So Peter obeys. Peter goes, and uh, and we see the outworking of that obedience, um, obedience to the instruction of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so he, he goes there, and then um, you know, verse twenty four onwards, we see that Cornelius is you know is is anticipated Peter to come. He's, he's don't no doubt you know that Peter. Suppose Peter does not come, what to do? He's he's already made arrangements. He's waiting for them. He's called together his relatives, his close friends, and I see the faith of this man. Right? Uh, God has spoken. I saw this vision. I've sent these people. Now I have to make arrangements uh, because something is, you know, he's he has told what I must do. Uh, that uh, I mean, the, this person who's going to come will tell me what I must do. So I let me let me call everyone. Okay. So he's called uh, his relatives, his uh, friends, and uh, and as Peter comes in. He falls down, worships, worships Peter, <laughs> right? He, he's, you know, he he has this. Uh, he doesn't. He's not have. A, he doesn't have a full understanding yet, okay, about God and so on. He's he's a religious person. He's a good man, religious man, and uh, and then, uh, you know, he's Peter says, "In stand up, I'm also a man," uh, and you you know, and and then kind of uh, you know, you read about that. So he says, uh, "This is what happened to me." Um, and uh, therefore, I came. 
Okay, I had this. Uh, I came, so I'm here. Your prayers have been answered, etc. Um, uh, you know, he says, um, you know how unlawful it is for a Jewish person to keep company with a uh, non-Jewish person, but now his that vision kind of connects, and he's he sees the interpretation. He, he gets the understanding. Yes, what God has not what God has cleansed, I must not call common or unclean. And therefore, you know, I have come. This is what he was referring to in that, that heavenly vision that I had. So, you know, I've come. So it, Peter's convinced and he's come. Okay, so we read about all that. And he goes on to share about Jesus. He goes on to share about uh, Christ and what he did uh, and so on and the good things that he did, healing all who were oppressed, you know, we, and and that's when that's when we uh, encounter that verse, no? verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him. And then he goes on to, uh, you know, talks about his death from the death on the cross and how he arose from the dead and uh, and whoever believes in him was 43 will receive remission of sin so he shared the gospel and then while it says was 44 while peter was still speaking these words the holy spirit fell upon them all those who heard the word and those of the circumcision who believed were astonished you know, those Jewish people who were with Peter and Peter himself were astonished because the gift of the Holy Spirit has been poor, had been poured out on the Gentiles also. Okay. So as Peter shared the gospel, he fully shared the gospel, uh, people have heard and, and obviously they had received it, you know, they had acknowledged it as they heard, they were acknowledging this to be the truth. And the Holy Spirit has poured about poured on them. It says the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. So they were astonished. Oh, it's not only for the Jews, it's for the non-Jewish people also. Uh, and how did they know, verse 46, how did they know that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also? For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Okay, So they heard them speak with tongues something supernatural was happening these were you know these were non-jewish people they were gentiles and they are glorifying god and they are praying in other tongues just like how they themselves did right so then peter gives an instruction can anyone forbid water that these should not be baptized who have received the holy spirit just as we have okay just as we received these people have received, so let them be baptized in water also, right? So, so they, you see, uh, you know, different uh, order, you know, the, in the flow of events for people to be baptized in water, right? Uh, it could be people who believed, baptized, filled with the Spirit, like we see in Samaria, right? Philip goes there, shares the gospel, they have believed. And they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, which means they were baptized in water. Then Peter and John go there, lay hands. They are filled with the Spirit. They're baptized in the Holy Spirit. Here, Peter shares the gospel. They receive it. The Holy Spirit uh, you know, fills them. They are baptized. They receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Um, and they are you know, praying in other tongues and praying, praising God. And then they are baptized in Water. So Peter is saying, okay, now let them be baptized in water, right? So, uh, so they they were you know, baptized in water. So we we see this, uh, you know, this outworking thing. So exciting, you know, moments there, you know, things that are happening for the first time. Um, here's a non-Jewish, uh, you know, group of uh, Gentiles, non-Jews, who are receiving. Here's a man who's been who was a religious man, who was, uh, you know, generous man, good man. And here, you know, his faith as he is, his life has changed because now he's received remission of sins as uh, Peter shared. And he's been filled with the Holy Spirit and, you know, all excitement, okay, happening there. And, uh, so all that we see in Acts chapter 10, okay. And Acts chapter 11, what happens is there's a backlash, you know, 
here peter a jew has gone into a non jewish household which is not permitted he's fellowshiped with them in fact verse 48 uh, chapter 10 and verse 48 it says that they asked him to stay a few more days right a few days so obviously he complied he stayed there and uh, maybe you know shared more about jesus after all you know peter walked with jesus so all those conversations he must have shared uh, all those experiences how he uh you know deny them and the, how the lord forgave him and restored him and after you know the resurrection how they went to the tomb and saw all that he must have shared to them uh and also about you know them being filled with the spirit and so on. all those experiences uh he must have shared right he stayed there now when the apostles and brethren who were in judea okay so now when they heard the gentiles uh they received they contended with him now peter goes back to jerusalem uh, from from uh, caesarea uh he goes back and then they contended with him they they argued with him they say you know how can you do this you do you know you're a jew and so so that, so that old mindset is still there even though they you know they have come to believe in jesus even though they were they had experienced the power of the holy spirit that old religious mindset is still there you know they, even though they are in the new way of life so they saying how can you do that you know you went in you fellowship with the uncircumcised men you ate with them then peter explained Okay, Peter explains to them, uh, starting from the vision. He says, "You know, this is what happened. Uh, this is what I saw, and three times, you know, that I was asked, instructed to rise and kill. I said no because these are not my diet, not the Jewish diet, and and how he was taken and what he did." Okay, now, verse eighteen, chapter eleven, verse eighteen uh, says, "When they heard." these things they uh, they were quiet okay um uh, when they heard these things they became silent and they glorified god saying then god has also granted to the gentiles repentance to life okay so they heard about this work of the holy spirit and they they glorified god okay uh, and i just want to draw your attention to you know verse 12 Paul recount I mean sorry Peter recounting the holy spirit told me to go and the spirit told me to go doubting nothing in verse 15 he he again testifies and he says as i began to speak um the holy spirit fell upon them as upon us at the beginning so he's saying just you know you know how the holy spirit filled us and you know we we experienced this supernatural thing the same way he fell upon them as well and he says in verse 17 if therefore god gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believed now that's the qualifier god gave the same gift to them uh, as he gave to us when we believed on the lord jesus christ okay that was the only common thing these were deeply religious jews those were you know non uh, you know uh, um, maybe religious to some in, in a way but different non jewish people and here the only qualifier is that they believed on the lord jesus christ and he says who was i that i could withstand god okay so um peter recounts this whole thing that has happened and uh, and while doing so he again you know reaffirms the spirit the holy spirit instructing him to go the holy spirit filling those people as they believed in the lord jesus and saying you know how can i who am i right the holy spirit has been given to them um, and the only thing is that we believed they believed they have received just as we have also received okay so again goes on to uh, again prove that you know peter actually shared this Peter actually shared this in Acts chapter four, right? Acts chapter four, when he uh, when he testified, when he um, sorry, Acts chapter two, I'm sorry, Acts chapter two, uh, verse thirty nine. He actually he prophesied. He he said, you know, this gift of the Holy Spirit is to you and to your children. Of course, the audience there was primarily Jewish, right? So you, your children. 
and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. So he actually you know, gives that instruction there, you know, and, and kind of prophesies. He says, "This is what you know. This gift is not just restricted to us. It's for, for us, for you, your children, and as and all those who are afar off." And he sees this happening right before his eyes, you know, just like he shared that time. And probably he thought it was only Jews, right? but now he sees that you know the scope is different. Um, it's it's not just Jews anymore. It's it's anyone who will call on the Lord Jesus in faith, and they will be saved, filled with the Spirit. Okay. Okay. Let's let's look at a uh, few more verses. Uh, let's let's move a little quickly. Uh, let's look at chapter thirteen. Okay. Chapter thirteen talks about uh, another church. Okay. Uh, this is the church in a place called Antioch. Okay, chapter 13 and verses uh, um, uh, verses 1. Okay, before that, maybe I, I just skipped, uh, uh, you know, this reference. Chapter 11, and you look at verse um, 20, uh, 24, right? 24, talks about Barnabas. Okay, um, chapter 11 and verse 24. For he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith, and a great, great many people were added to the Lord. Talks about the work, uh, talks about the character, and also about the work and ministry of Barnabas 24. Verse 28 um, refers to a person by name Agabus, who was a prophet. Okay, Agabus, a prophet. And it says that he stood up and showed by the Spirit that there was going to be a famine throughout all the world, which also happened in the days of Claudius Caesar. So, um, well, the Lord Jesus said that there will be, uh, the Holy Spirit will, you know, uh, share of things to come. Uh, yeah, yeah, John, you have a question. Okay, one of the things mentioned uh, is to abstain from meat of strangled animals. Is, is that the question? Um, uh, this is one. Yes, Pastor. Uh, especially in uh, mention it just oh I see okay especially to abstain I mean what should the approach be see now um, uh, if you if you read carefully you know um, uh, that is where we are okay we are kind of getting ahead of ourselves we are coming to 15 um, and uh, we look at the Jerusalem Council also okay. you know, we're looking at 1518 um, but I'll just mention uh, that um, you know this is um, of course to the Gentile churches and also he he says uh, in verse 21, if you see verses, uh, you know, 15 and verse 21, for Moses has had throughout many generations those who preach him in every city, being read in the synagogues every Sabbath. Okay, and uh, and before that he says, but we write to them, but that we write to them to abstain from things polluted by idols, from sexual immorality, from things strangled, strangled and from. So, it is from uh, a Jewish standpoint. If you look at that, also, it is from a Jewish standpoint that uh, he is, uh, you know, they are sharing these things. Of course, uh, things polluted by idols, meaning uh, you know, things offered to idols and uh, idol worship, sexual immorality, which would be applicable to all, and uh, things strangled and from blood. But so it is from a Jewish standpoint, you know, if you actually look at it, because it says, for Moses had. Throughout generations, uh, those who preach him in every city being read in the synagogues every Sunday. You know, so this is this is being you know the these are being preached in the synagogues, is being shared. So you know these things we will highlight. And so and so we see in verse uh, 28, uh, 29, the same thing they say. You know, sexual immorality, um, things offered to idols, from blood and things strangled. You, you know, you abstain from these things. So it's going to a non-Jewish. Uh, audience but it's from a Jewish standpoint actually you know uh, because this is being preached in the synagogues and people who uh, who are being born again of course uh, you know they they will be exposed to that as well and then so he's saying you know let's let's come to an agreement and let's um, you know let's uh, give these instructions um, you know but later when we come to the the epistles Corinthians we read Paul is saying you know eat whatever is sold in the meat market uh, without asking any questions right so um, yeah so 
there also you know there it's just kind of makes everything clear for nothing is to be refused he says you know for for a jewish man to write that you know it it's it means that he has really uh experienced grace right so he says uh, you know don't refuse yes, anything yeah so that's the thing yeah thank you okay okay so where were we chapter 11 right okay so we finished chapter 11 so let's uh, we finished uh, Uh, you know agabus uh, and also about uh, barnabas now let's move on to uh, acts chapter 13 uh acts chapter 13 verses 1 to 4 so it's in this place in this place called antioch it's a it's a church uh, the believers uh, who were there in antioch and uh, and they were it says there were prophets there were teachers and uh, some people are listed there barnabas simeon and it says here verse 2 as they ministered to the lord and fasted okay so they are ministering to the lord and they are fasting and they are praying as they did that the holy spirit spoke the holy spirit said now separate to me barnabas and saul for the work to which i have called them then having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them they sent them away so this is something that we see that as they were seeking the lord they were fasting they were praying they were seeking the lord it says that they ministered to the lord you know maybe in worship and you know they were, they were seeking the lord the holy spirit spoke and gave them an instruction and uh, about ministry so saying now these two people now separate them to me and uh, for the work that i have called them and uh, and so they commissioned them okay so so we see another principle you know when it comes to missions when it comes to the work of the lord uh, the holy spirit speaking and saying okay uh, bringing the mind of christ you know bring the um, heart of the father uh, saying okay these are consecrated people of the spirit and you know i have called them for a specific purpose so pray Uh, and release them for that verse 4 so being sent out by the holy spirit they went down to cilicia and from there they sailed to cyprus so it says here the holy spirit sending these uh, sending this missionary team like the missions team um paul and uh, and silas and they, and they go um uh, sorry paul, barnabas and saul and paul and barnabas they they are being sent out and then they Go. um so which is again you know for us uh, a principle here you know the holy spirit knows the holy spirit has wisdom the holy spirit knows the holy spirit shares the strategy for ministry for missions um and uh, he you know he, yeah we can of course we need to use our mind to explore to see uh, and i'm sure they they would have done that right they planned and say okay let's go to the city okay where do we need to stay etc they would have done that but you see that the holy spirit sent them out okay um they were sent out by the holy spirit they were called by the holy spirit and commissioned for this particular um, missionary journey and they and you see that uh, you know that bears fruit they go on this missionary journey they go on another one and another one and um, that that bears fruit okay so so we see that happening in uh, antioch okay chapter 13 verse 9 um so this is the first they go to cyprus and uh, the uh, so the, to the island of uh, paphos um then they there is a sorcerer there a magician a false prophet it says uh, whose name was bar jesus okay and um, so uh, here uh, uh, the uh, sorcerer withstands uh, the message of paul okay so paul is a uh, uh, ministering and he's actually um, you know connecting with uh, one of the leaders there it says uh, the proconsul sergius paulus um so he invited the steam and he wants to hear but this sorcerer is resisting now we are not given any uh, details how but but Saul knew but paul knew okay this man is resisting so then Saul who who also is called paul, paul filled with the holy spirit looked intently at him and said o full 
of all deceit and all fraud, you son of the devil, you enemy of all righteous uh, righteousness, will you not cease perverting the ways of the Lord? So probably he was giving some kind of a, you know, uh, refuting with words or maybe asking questions. We don't know. Uh, but the fact is that it says that he was seeking, his objective was that this pro council, this uh, government man, this leader, should not follow Jesus. Okay. So uh, that was his intention. So here, uh, as he was doing that, Paul, filled by the Spirit, he uh, he, he discerned by the Spirit, and he's filled by the Spirit, and he's looking intently at um, the sorcerer, and he says, "You know, this is what you are. You know, will you not cease perverting the ways of the Lord?" And then the, he pronounces a judgment. What will happen now? Indeed, he says, "The hand of the Lord is upon you." and you shall be blind not seeing the sun for a time you know for a season you are going to lose your eyesight okay and immediately a dark mist fell on him and he went around seeking someone to lead him by the hand and when this happened the fact that the power of god the, the you know the 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 fact that god knew beforehand and when he when he saw that this leader he believed right the proconsul believed when he saw what is being done being astonished at the teaching of the lord okay so he saw he heard and uh, he was astonished amazed and he believed okay so this is something that we see the the work of the holy spirit the very first place where they uh, you know um, they I mean, not the first place, actually. They had actually gone to the second place. They first go to Salamis, then Paphos, and this is where this happens. Okay, so we see this. Right. Then, um, let's look at verse 52, uh, same chapter, 13, and verse uh, 52. Um, talks about uh, the fact that, um, uh, you know, in um, this, there's an conflict there in Antioch, there's persecution there, um, and uh, the Jews were, uh, they are filled with envy. They see the many, many people coming to Jesus, coming to know about Jesus through us, right? But, um, so they, they kind of uh, stir them up, and they raise up uh, persecution against Paul and Barnabas. So, uh, verse 51, but they shook off the dust from their feet against them and came to Iconium. Okay, so uh, Paul, uh, Paul and Barnabas, you know, they just do that. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. So we again see this happening. The disciples being filled with the Holy Spirit and with joy. Okay, um, let's look at 15 and verse 8. Okay, fifteen is uh, so. Fifteen is what uh, like uh, fifteen. This chapter was what John was referring to. John Paul was referring to earlier, uh, where uh, it addresses uh, uh, a problem that they had, a challenge that the early church had, and one of the, uh, I think one of the yeah, the, probably the second challenge you would say. You know, like um, what what happened was this that certain men had taught the believers that you need to be circumcised in order to be saved. Okay, yes, Jesus did all this, that's fine, but you need to be circumcised. You need to keep the law. You need to be circumcised in order to be saved. So Paul and Barnabas have a, you know, meet with them, and then, you know, they, it says here in verse 2 that no small dissension and dispute, they determined that Paul and Barnabas um, uh, should go to Jerusalem and, and about this question. So it was unresolved. They go to uh, Jerusalem and uh, the apostles, the elders, everyone comes together they, to consider this. And uh, and this is what happens. Okay, So verse 8, we, um, we read how... Uh, Peter shares about his encounter with the with the non-Jewish people and how they received Christ, how they received the Holy Spirit. So, um, so Peter addresses, and then verse eight he says, "So God, who knows the heart, acknowledged them by giving them the Holy Spirit, just as He did to us." So Peter 
you know shares about uh, shares and testifies this and um, james responds to that you know in verse 13 uh, he says men and brethren listen to me you know simon has declared peter has declared how what has happened and and so on and uh, and therefore you know we need to do something about it so in verse 28 we read uh, this okay so they they say okay they decide that these four things you know, food offered to idols uh, sexual immorality you know food strangled and no blood so this we will instruct okay but we're not going back to the law or we're not going to tell them that you know they need to be circumcised now that's all wrong right so but with regard to the law you know these are some things we'll tell them that they need to still keep okay these are uh, you know so he says here uh, verse 28 for it seemed good to the holy spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things you know these things are necessary uh, in so it seemed good to us and to the holy spirit and uh, and and you see the thing you know it seemed good to us and to the holy spirit so there was the witness of the holy spirit in their own in their own hearts okay so it seemed good to us and to the uh, it's good good to the holy spirit and to us and so we give this instruction so they they bring this letter and uh, so paul and barnabas uh, they go and they go to all the places and uh, and they deliver the content of the letter right they go to antioch they gather the believers and they deliver the content of the letter and when they read it they rejoiced over the uh, encourage, uh, over its encouragement it says yeah okay so this is what they did so um, so even in that putting together so it's uh, so what is it it is really uh, you know um, the whole believers, the elders, leadership coming together and pondering over this challenge. So how do we do this? You know, we don't see, uh, you know, we need the wisdom of God in this. Now, here are these, you know, believers. And uh, and yes, it's it's true that we should not uh, burden them further. We cannot you know, tell them to keep the law and be circumcised. And that's a wrong teaching. But we can share them these things. And they come to this conclusion and then they... Uh, and then they share, right? Um, so in that, you see the Holy Spirit witnessing to their heart and, uh, and uh, you know, giving his approval. So it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us, which means that they were sensitive to the Holy Spirit. It was not just, a, you know, not just a debate or a discussion with facts and figures, but they were also at the same time sensitive to the Holy Spirit, right? Um, so, that, so that is something that we see uh, with regard to church structure, with regard to uh, not really church structure, but a decision collectively taken by the leaders of the church, being sensitive to the Holy Spirit. They are instructing other believers, right? Okay. Um, okay, so let's look at uh, uh, another, let's just move on, Acts 16. And verses 6 to 10, Acts 16. And now here we see again the Holy Spirit doing something uh, in with regard to ministry. Okay, so Acts 16 and verse 6. Now when they had gone through Phrygia and the region of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. After they had come to Mysia, they tried to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit did not permit them. So passing by Mysia, they came down to Troas. Okay, so in verses 6 and 7, we see that the Holy Spirit preventing them from going into a particular area. Well, the what was the objective? They wanted to share the gospel. The objective was scriptural, right? Um, they, after all, they had been commissioned to go and do the work of ministry. In fact, the Holy Spirit said, call them and uh, you know release them to the work of uh, this work so they went and traveled so but we see here that the spirit of god did not permit them okay uh, again it tells us to the degree to which they were dependent on the spirit 
they were obedient to the Holy Spirit. Okay. Um, just because it was a good thing, and just because it was a noble thing, and the right scriptural thing uh, to do, you know, they they were uh, sensitive to the Spirit of God at the end of it all. Right? Um, so they wanted to do what was best. Right? So probably the timing. So it, it is God's will to save. You know, it is God's will to that we, people should know the gospel, that all men might be saved. But we see here that the Spirit of God, in His wisdom, uh, holding back the steam. Okay. Now, twice it happens. Uh, verse six, uh, they're for forbidden to preach the word in Asia. Verse seven, uh, they're forbidden. They tried to go into Bithynia, but then the Holy Spirit again did not permit them. Then, you know, uh, verse nine talks about how Paul has a vision about uh, a man in Macedonia. Come over to Macedonia and help us. Then they go. Then they go, and obviously, you know, they had the freedom to go, uh, or in other words, they they ex they did not experience, or they did not feel that the spirit was preventing them. Holy Spirit was preventing them, but they literally had the freedom to go forward and do it. Right, so something amazing that we see here. Right, um, so this is something that we can apply in our own lives as well. You know, a close walk with God. Uh, uh, an intimate walk with God, where we hear is every whisper and every nudge and every prompting, right? Even in the things that seem good, Lord, you know, if He is, you know, yeah, principally, you know, we can, right? If we live by the principle, yeah, we, we can go ahead and do it by the principle and precept. But if for some reason the Holy Spirit is, you know, forbidding or preventing us, are we sensitive? That's the question, right? Are we sensitive to that, uh, to the degree that uh, you know that we'll be obedient even in those moments, right? So that is something for us to grow in. That is something for us to follow, okay? and that's something that we see here. Okay, uh, Acts eighteen and verse five. Acts eighteen, verse five. Uh, it says, "When Silas and Timothy had come from Macedonia, Paul was compelled by the Spirit." And testify to the Jews that Jesus is the Christ. Paul was compelled by the Spirit. So that's uh, Acts chapter eighteen and uh, and verse five. Um, uh, just, just give me a minute, please. Um, yeah, Acts chapter eighteen and verse. Um, so another. The, I'm just looking at another version. It says uh, Paul was pressed uh, by the. Uh, Pressed in the spirit, it says, uh, which means he was uh, compelled, and it, it was a uh, something that there was a pressing. Okay, and so uh, I just wanted to share that. You know, just, uh, there's a there's a there's a pressing in the sense there's a weight. Um, he felt that weight of burden that he had to share, right, and the uh, share the gospel, and this happened. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, like when he was waiting for uh, Timothy and Silas, uh, and they came and joined him. Right. So, um, so this is something that we see that there's uh, the Holy Spirit compelled uh, the put that. You know, it is it's like pressing. It's like uh, we I have to do this. Right. I have to do this. Uh, um, it's like a weight. It's like a burden. And he went ahead and shared the gospel. Okay. Um, Chapter 19, okay, let's uh, look at chapter 19. Chapter 19, verses 1 to 6, uh, is it, it talks about what happened in Ephesus. Okay. Um, this is something similar to what happened in Samaria. Okay, uh, So here, Ephesus, let's read. And it happened while Apollos was at Corinth, that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus, and finding some disciples, he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So they, they said to him, We have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. And he said to them, Into what then were you baptized? So they said, Into John's baptism. Then Paul said, John indeed baptized with a baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him, who would come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. 
when they heard this they were baptized in the name of the lord jesus and when paul had laid hands on them the spirit came upon them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied now the men were about 12 and also it talks about these 12 people uh, who were in ephesus now it says there were some they were and disciples okay so again the understanding was not very clear and they were baptized with the baptism of john um paul finds out when he asks them about the holy spirit they they have no idea of the holy spirit so then they are baptized in water okay in the name of the lord verse 5 and after that paul lays hands on them and prays and the holy spirit comes upon them and they spoke with tongues and they prophesied as well okay they spoke with tongues and prophesied so we see that happening um similar to samaria right samaria also something supernatural happened when peter and john went and laid hands and you know they they were filled with the spirit uh, something similar we see in uh, in saul's case also where ananias goes and lays hands he, he could see his eyes were opened and uh, he was filled with the spirit cornelius uh, house of course it was a sovereign there is no laying on of hands peter just sharing the gospel people hearing acknowledging they are filled with the spirit okay right okay let's look at um, chapter 20 <clears throat> chapter 20 verses 22 and 23 um so Paul testifying and he's saying, now I go bound in the spirit to Jerusalem, not knowing the things that will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies in every city saying that chains and trib tribulations await me. So Paul is saying, you know, I, I go bound in the spirit. He's, he's addressing the Ephesian uh, elders. Okay, He's meeting them for the first, I mean, for the last time, actually, he would not uh, see them again. And Ephesus, Ephesus is a place where he, he was there for a, a long time and you know um, teaching and so on so he, he's meeting them he calls them mm. uh, calls for the elders of the church they come and he tells them you know uh, he testifies to them encourages them and uh, so in the course of that he says this says that i go bound in my spirit and uh, the holy spirit testifies he, he tells me that wherever i go there will be uh, persecution Right. Uh, there will be tribulation. There will be persecution. So, um, so the the Lord Jesus, you know, teaching that he, the Holy Spirit will tell us to come. Right. He will fort. He he will give you knowledge of things that are going to happen, like foretell uh, what is going to happen. So the same thing here. So uh, Paul is saying, the Holy Spirit tells me that there are chains. I uh, they testifies that. In every city, there will be chains and tribulations. Okay? And it was so. Uh, in fact, um, the Lord himself said that he will stand before kings, stand before leaders to testify. Uh, he will uh, testify about, uh, you know, in chains, that he is there uh, about Jesus. Right? So uh, we see that. Okay, so let's look at... Um, chapter 20 verse 28 and here <clears throat> um, uh, in the to the elders against he's saying take heed to yourself and to all the flock among which the holy spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of god which he purchased with his own blood so he's saying you know you elders uh, you take uh, take care of yourselves you know um, be careful be alert, take heed to yourselves and to the flock and to the people among whom you are leaders. Um, so he's using the analogy of the shepherd and the flock uh, and the sheep. So he's saying, and to all the flock, among whom the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Okay, God the Holy Spirit has appointed you and he's made you overseers to shepherd the church of God to shepherd, to care for, to protect, to feed, uh, to lead, right? That's what the shepherd does. So uh, the whole Holy Spirit has made you overseers um, to oversee, to shepherd the church of God. So, so we see another aspect of...
to share the flock of God, to share the church of God. Um, right. Then, um, one last verse, Acts 21, verse 4. Um, Paul uh, uh, talks about uh, going to this place, Phoenicia, and then um, they, they uh, sail to Syria, Syria landed their tire. Verses 2 and 3 talks about that. And finding disciples, they stayed there. Um, they told Paul to the Spirit, through the Spirit, to, to Muslims. So now, so, so Paul knew that there will be persecutions. Now, the disciples also knew that there will be persecutions. And they were, you know, that was revealed to them also. And uh, the way both saw uh, or the outworking of that was very different, right? So Paul was like saying, this is what the Spirit says, but I must go. And the disciples were saying, this is what the Spirit says, so, you know, you be careful, why don't you avoid, right? So that is what we see. So um, they told Paul through the Spirit not to go to um, Jerusalem. <clears throat> okay, let's look at verses 10 and 11, and then we'll close. And uh, 10 and 11 talk about Agabus. Agabus also comes and he took, uh, I mean, he, he, sorry, takes Paul's belt, ties his own hands and feet and says, this is what the Holy Spirit says, that the owner of the man who owns this belt, you know, will be uh, Jews at Jerusalem, will bind him and deliver him into the hand of the Gentiles. This is what the Holy Spirit says. So the Holy Spirit telling uh, or, um, you know, foretelling what is to come, okay, uh, whether be it persecution or trials or tribulations, saying, okay, this will await. Now, this, this helps in many ways. Like, Paul was already informed, right? He already knew, and he was prepared, right? He was prepared to face for the sake of the gospel. Because um, he says in verse 13, you know, I'm ready not only to be bound, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. Okay. Uh, when he would not be persuaded, we ceased and we said, the will of the Lord be done. So, so Paul was uh, already, you know, he knew the Spirit of God has spoken to him about what was awaiting him. Okay, so we looked at um, many scriptures. Uh, you can go through it again. And we it's wonderful to see what the Holy Spirit did and continues to do through his people in the church today. Okay, so we'll stop here. And we'll get back next week and we'll continue with... Uh, uh, where we picked off, where we left off, right? About the restorative moves of God and the work of the Holy Spirit in restoring uh, to the church. Okay. Okay. So thank you. Uh, we'll stop here. God bless. We meet again.